back to my channel. As you can see, I have a new setup, new camera, new lights, new everything. So let's get it popping. Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna translate when I'm editing, but my monitor so far, it looks good. It's like true to color, true to everything. It's not overexposed, it's not too bright, it's not too dark, it's just perfect. So hopefully, I got it right. If not, it's gonna be trial and error. So yeah, um, I got a new setup too. I redecorated my room. I'm still looking for some pillows, so that's why I'm really not trying to show everything, you know, I'm trying to hide. So yeah, so I have a story time for you guys today, but as I do the story time, I'm just gonna do my makeup because I just don't really want to sit here and talk because that's like, that's just so boring. So why not do my makeup as I tell you guys this story about how my friend tried to scam me. I feel like every time I tell you guys a story, it's about somebody <laughs> scamming me or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows off camera cause I'm not even gonna be like talking while I do my brows and um, get you some popcorn, grab your makeup, do it with me, I don't know. We got a lot to talk about and also this is gonna be a lengthy video so yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> it's like the more my brows grow in, the easier filling them in is. That's so weird, that's normally never the case. But anyways, but yeah, if you guys want to know any specific products, they will be in the description box. I'm going to try to name them as I go, but I'm sure I'm going to get into this story. So, where to start, you guys? Where to start? Okay, so just a disclaimer, I would like to let you guys know this, there's no beef, um, but it hasn't been resolved either. <laughs> But um, I'm actually really over it, so that's why I'm coming here with the story time. I will most likely never come on here with the story time if I'm still upset about it or if the situation's still going on because I don't like to like talk out of anger because I'm really big on like, um, you know, you can't take words back. Like I feel like people say stuff out of anger, but I feel like at our age, you know what you're saying and you know how it's gonna affect somebody. So for me, I try not to say anything that I might regret or possibly can't take back. So this story happened about two years ago. The reason why this came about anyways, I mean telling this story is because as you guys know, I do makeup and I'm currently not back at work. So I've been like rebranding for my comeback when I go back and you know, different things and I wanna share them with you as well at, along the way. So. I was like, I need to tell this story because there's probably somebody going through something similar or been through this or don't know how to handle the situation. So I feel like if you can hear it from somebody else, maybe it can help you. So that's why we're here, okay? So I had a friend, I'm not gonna name her, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, and we weren't friends at first. And I don't say that in like a bad way. We like grew, we grew, to become friends. We're both makeup artists, we met on Instagram, like literally we're friends for like, I would say about five years. Um, but we always worked with each other, we always like looked out for each other and all that kind of stuff. So, um, just a quick backstory. We basically would do like weddings with each other, like if, if I had a large wedding party and vice versa, she would call me. A lot of times, I feel like she just wanted me to work with her, um, which I appreciated. Not saying that she needed me, but like the wedding party wouldn't even be that big. And she would be like, hey, Tasha, like, come on, let's do this wedding, blah, blah, blah. So I will say she always looked out for me. Um, I'll never deny that. But you know, sometimes people get too comfortable and <laughs> baby. <laughs> so um, this particular time, we had a wedding. Um, we knew about this wedding, honestly, like a year or like a year and some months ahead of time. Like the lady really booked. She had a huge wedding party. I believe it was like 17 people and she booked us or whatever. So typically like if I'm helping her with the wedding or if she's helping me, this is why I can't talk into my makeup, oh my God. Um, what happens is, let me show you guys. I'm gonna be using my makeup addiction palette it looks like this i've been loving these little transition colors so i might use this whole palette today who knows we'll see but yeah so i'm gonna go on with this shade first so basically um what would happen is like say i had a wedding i would tell my bride who's helping me 
but she wouldn't meet them until that day like she would get their Instagram and all that kind of stuff but you typically don't meet the the other person the other makeup artist who didn't book the wedding wouldn't meet the bride or the party until the day of does that make sense but like typically I have already interacted with them and all that kind of stuff so this was her wedding so typically like I said wouldn't meet each other but for some reason <laughs> I guess as a girl book so ahead a time I had done the, the bride's makeup I did her makeup for her engagement shoot mind you this was not my wedding I was helping her but because I was helping the girl was you know comfortable enough with me doing her makeup for engagement shoot I did her makeup for another shoot um, and I met her so like it was cool so that's where like that relationship began we like followed each other on instagram like when i tell you like weddings and stuff like this don't typically get personal but you know everybody was cool we were excited this was a big wedding like she was like younger like she was like closer to our age so i think that's why it was like gonna be more fun too um so yeah so anyways moving forward so the wedding day comes okay and i woke up this morning great mood you guys i i got up i freaking got kind of cute i ain't even gonna lie because when i go to weddings you guys i be having like leggings hat on t-shirt like i don't really look I'm, I'm more of a loungy MUA. I'm not the makeup artist that comes suited and booted. Like, I'm just a really chill girl, okay? So, um, the day comes, I get all ready, I get kind of cute, put on a little lip gloss. Your girl was ready to work, okay? It was 17 people. I, I think that's the number. That's the number that keeps sticking out of my head, so I believe it's 17 people. So, your girl was ready, okay? So, um... I get ready and I get ready before time because it was kind of close to my house so I had time I was just sitting around so I finally decided to get up and head out so friend calls me um, I should give her a name so that I don't just keep saying friend so Sally calls me <laughs> and is like oh my god did you leave yet and I'm like maybe like I'm like am I late or something like I don't know <laughs> um, and she's like I'm like no I didn't leave now I'm gonna go in with this color by the way so I didn't leave she's like oh my god I hope you didn't leave like she called off the wedding I'm like wait a minute wait a minute what she did what what do you mean she called off the wedding our call time is in an hour what do you mean she called off the wedding I'm confused so we're sitting there like all these different scenarios in our head about why the wedding was canceled and whatever and we still to this day by the way don't know why it was canceled um but she called it off they were all there ready and she called it off who knows what happened so so at this point so at this point after we've gotten over the fact that the wedding is canceled and we're just going to be sitting at home all day <laughs> um we're like, wow, so what are we gonna do about her money? Because you know, I don't know if you guys remember my last bridal story, but basically I and her, her and I, um, we both accept payments the day before the wedding. And if you are a makeup artist, I think that that is the best way to do it because weddings are so hectic. Like you need to just accept payment the day before because you don't have to run after anybody um trying to get your money you don't have to try to calculate make sure the person gave you the right amount when i tell you i've done that before and it's been hell like i've literally been at a wedding an additional three hours because people have not paid me or waiting and or i have to wait till the ceremony is over and if that's not what you paid me for that's not fair for me to sit and wait you know what i'm saying so just a tip for my upcoming muas try to get your money before have a contract so they feel comfortable you know you're secure for me i know i'm a woman of my word so if i say i'm gonna come i'm gonna come and i don't i'm no scammer so if i can't make it for any reason the first thing i'm gonna do is send you back your money period okay so yeah so anyways we had received the money the day before she well she received the money and she sent me my portion of the money so i'm like wow what do we do and i'm like well they haven't said anything yet so let's see what's gonna happen so personally this is where it gets sticky so it's like 
on a personal level, I really want to give you back your money. But on a professional level, baby, <laughs> you didn't even cancel your wedding 24 hours before, which still wouldn't be enough time because... But you canceled it literally an hour before we are supposed to be there. So it's just kind of like... They're, girl, you're gonna have to take that up, okay? But anyway, so we're like figuring out and I was like, well, let, let's just see what happens. You know, check on her, see what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So basically, nobody had reached out yet, but I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some advice because we've never had this situation before. Um, I'm gonna get some advice and see what we should do. So I called my mom. I believe she called her mom, her friend. I called, like, I was talking to my aunt. I was talking to hella people because, like, I just felt like, what the heck do I do? And I'm going to be using this dark brown now to deepen the crease. So, um, so I'm like, okay. I called my mom, and my mom was like, well, honestly, you shouldn't give her your money back because now she didn't, she didn't cancel in enough time to... Ew, you guy, I hate when that happens. You see when you talk too much? Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. So I put on this chapstick and because I was talking so much, it created this ring around my mouth and that's actually disgusting. And it happens to the best of us, right? Okay, so anyways, so I talked to my mom and my mom was like, honestly, like she doesn't, she shouldn't get her money back. And my aunt said that, my friend said that. They're like, she shouldn't get her money back because she knew what was gonna happen when she canceled the wedding, despite anything that may have happened. And you gotta think about it. The venue is not gonna refund her, the caterer, the florist, she's not gonna get money back for her dress. And it's like, you, you've kind of, no offense to her, but you've kind of wasted everybody's time. Like I know, Whatever may have happened had to have been big for you to cancel your wedding, but you know, the surrounding people, that doesn't really affect them because they were here to work, you know what I'm saying? So it's like that hard balance of trying to figure out whether you want to be personal or whether you want to be professional because I'm professional, but I build a, a relationship with most of my clients. So it's kind of like, what do I do? <laughs> so that was that called her back we talked about it and i was like okay how about this how about if anything worst case worst case scenario if she asks for the money back let's just give her half of it back i think that's only fair one we really didn't work but i don't think it's fair for us to take a complete l on this situation so let me know what you want to do so i can send you back that money because obviously i'm gonna have to give money back too just let me know communication hello remember in this whole um, um story time communication is key okay so um yeah that was pretty much the conversation so i don't know if it was later that day or the next day i don't really i can't really remember but basically the bride's sister had reached out and asked for a refund. And this is the thing, I figured that they would ask for a refund because I'm like 80% sure that the bridesmaids had to pay for their own services. So it's not like the bride took an L herself and was like, it's just over, I don't care what happens. It was more so like, when you have individual people who pay their money out of pocket, now they're, they're upset, they want their money back. So I figured that's what was gonna happen. So. The bride's sister reached out and asked us for the funds back. Or not us, asked Sally for the funds back. And Sally was like, Sally just sent me the conversation. She never like, you know, discussed it really with me. But that wasn't my call anyway. I was just there to help. So, so it wasn't my call. Wasn't trying to make it my call because girl, mm -mm. So anyways, um, I don't know what I want to do with my eyes next. I want shimmer, but like, <sighs> so the bride sister reached out and said, um, you know, can we get a refund back? And Sally was like, you know, no, because, you know, it was very last minute. We were already en route. And you know, we've already bought hella supplies for, I mean, not those words, but you know, bought supplies for this 
big wedding and you know, the refund is just not possible. I'm not mad at it. Honestly, I'm not, either or would have worked, but you just have to, you, it just is what it is, okay? So the bride's sister resp replies and was like, you know, basically I think it's really inconsiderate that you guys wouldn't consider refunding us and all this kind of stuff and, but whatever, I wish you guys the best on your business endeavors. And we left it at that. After that, I'm gonna take this shade right here. So after that, we were both a bit shook <laughs> about the situation. I don't think I like this, whatever. So we were a bit, both a bit shook about the situation, but we moved on. I mean, it is what it is. As far as I know, that was the last time Sally and the bride sister communicated to my knowledge, which although that was not my wedding, I feel like because there was money involved and I had been paid as well, I should have been thoroughly updated on the situation, okay? So that's that story of, that's that first part of the story. So, um, so two weeks have passed and we had another wedding. This wedding was in like, I wanna say one of the Carolinas, North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, I live in Georgia, so both are like kind of, close but the wedding was you know far out so I asked her I said hey what time do we have to wake up on say it's Friday on Friday or Saturday what time do we have to wake up to go so I can know what I'm doing because like just a side note she was kind of a last minute person I don't know if she just didn't want to tell me stuff or she genuinely didn't know but like she would wait until last minute to tell me everything, whether it be time, what kind of look we're doing, where we're doing it at. I'm just like, girl, like I'm over here having to literally beg you and ask you what time is this and what is that? It was getting to a point where it was getting frustrating. And that's when I say, that's when people get comfortable because I'm like, you know, business is business at the end of the day. If I ever asked her to help me with a wedding, I was telling her the day, the time, the number of people, where at, every detail that I possibly can, what kind of look we're doing, all that kind of stuff. Like, it, it's just something that you get from the brides when you book the wedding. So I don't know why she wouldn't tell me. I don't know, I don't really care, whatever. So, so, um, kind of like this actually. Oh, this is like low key like a bridal look. You guys see what I did there? <laughs> so I asked her, she's like, oh, like I'll let you know, which I'm just like, girl, how are you gonna let me know and it's in the two days? Like, I'm not understanding, I'm not understanding. But I just let it be because I had the whole day blocked off, so regardless, I was I was gonna have to be there. But let me tell y'all, I'm not a morning person, so like, I just needed to know what time I had to wake up because baby girl, <laughs> I don't like to wake up early. And I'm if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna have to wake up at like, four, like three or four. And I'm just like, girl, that's when I go to bed. What is you saying? What is you saying? So whatever, she was like, I'll let you know. And I left it at that. We continued to have other conversations and whatever. So the next day, which was actually the day before, yeah, so I asked her two days before the wedding. So the day before the wedding, she texts me. And I wanna let you guys know, this is where it gets very sticky because for the past two years, I have been forming this narrative in my head that this is how it went, but that's not really how it went, but she was still wrong. No, she was even more wrong now that I've reread the text. So she texts me, I actually saved the thread, but I have the conversation in my phone so that I do not, so I do not give you guys false information. Just listen carefully, okay? So she texts me, the day before and it was in the afternoon because i remember i got off work it wasn't the afternoon it was in the evening it was like four something because i remember i is there any times on here oh it was like afternoon yeah it was afternoon so anyway she texts me and this is what she said hey tasha so i hope this doesn't upset you by me saying this this is strictly from a business perspective not to be funny or anything Seeing that I paid you for Blank's wedding, which was the wedding from two weeks ago that got canceled, remember that, 
which and then she put in parentheses which we ended up not doing I think it's only fair that those funds make up for tomorrow's wedding I honestly feel like if I paid you again I will be giving away more money if you don't want to work tomorrow's wedding that's a that's not a problem and I understand just want just didn't want you to think that I was trying to be funny or, or anything but yes let me know so first off before I read my response I thought I don't know why I read it like that that day but I thought that she said she paid for blanks wedding meaning she gave the lady her money back so that for the past the people that I told this story to in real life I was like, yeah, she told me she sent her the money back, but I don't believe her because blah, 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 blah. So y'all are going to see my response. But now that I'm looking at it, she never even corrected me on that response. So I should have known then and there that that wasn't the case. But we're going to get into that, honey. So yeah, I'm going to read you guys my response and let you know exactly what I said. I said, hey, doesn't upset me, but why didn't you tell me that you paid for a blank sweating? I told you that I would have given you the money back. We both agreed that we weren't give, that we weren't giving her the money, so why wouldn't you let me know? That was your decision to do, which I had no idea about. That messes up things for me now that I can't work a whole Saturday. And honestly, I have a lot of coming up, and I wish you would have told me sooner because I turned away, hold on. I turned away a lot of people tomorrow knowing that I had a wedding party. And I said, no, I don't want to come because that's not fair because I agreed to this months ago. But you also should have told me that you paid blank back. So basically, I was upset, which I should be upset because let me let me break this down for you before I read you her response. Basically, I just feel like now that I'm reading it, she just felt like she was wasting money by paying me again only because we didn't do the wedding last week that's not how that works we both didn't do the wedding last week it, I mean two weeks ago so we're two weeks ahead and and you don't want to pay me for a wedding that I'm gonna have to do out of the state wake up early drive to and work I think this was like a 10 people wedding too. It was like 10 or 11 or something. And you want me to actually work? And, and you never told me that? Why did you not just say, clearly money was tight on her end as well, okay? So let's just bring this back. You didn't want to pay me because you felt like it was going to be wasting money because, because why? Because why? Now I sound like I'm getting mad again, but when you say it out loud, the shit just sounds so ridiculous because you thought I was dumb enough to pack my stuff up and work for free. You did not communicate that with me. I'm acting like I'm talking to her. <laughs> but you did not communicate that with me when you made that decision. The right thing to do would have been, and I'm gonna continue my makeup before I sit here with my eyes for the next 20 minutes. So I'm gonna hydrate. But the right thing to do would have been as a friend and as a professional, because you want to say from a business perspective, that ain't no damn goddamn business perspective. That's you being motherfucking broke, okay? That's what that is. And it's okay because I, I admitted I was having, you know, money issues at that time. And it is what it is. It happens to everybody. So be straight up with your shit. Period. Period. Okay? <laughs> so, um... So yeah, that's not from a business perspective. The right thing to do would have been to A, from the beginning when you knew that you were, were thinking about doing this, saying, hey Tasha, like, you know, money's tight right now. Do you mind if you, you help me with this wedding? You know, I know I paid you last week, but X, Y, Z is going on. I, I'm not even a person where you have to really tell me your whole life story, but I feel like when it's affecting me and my, my money is involved and my time is involved, I, need to know period so that's something that she should have that's something that she should have told me off rip or she could have just easily just like i assumed that she paid the girl back when she didn't i don't know why i thought that in my head i'm stupid but um what she should have done is even lied say hey i gave her the money back so boom since i gave her the money back you don't have to worry about sending it just keep that money for next week i wouldn't have questioned it that's how fucking dumb I am. I wouldn't have questioned it. <laughs> but now you're blatantly disrespecting me and I'm using my Tatcha um, primer. Um, now you're just blatantly disrespecting me and my time 
and you're just basically saying F you. And I don't like that. I don't. But yeah, that's how that went. Um, so that's how that went. And I just thought it was very, that wasn't professional. That wasn't no business perspective. That was no nothing. That was just you not wanting to pay me because I'm not understanding. Let me, let me break this down. I know I'm repeating myself, but we both got paid two weeks ago for a wedding that we didn't do because it got canceled, right? You didn't pay me and, and you didn't get paid. We both got equally paid. Remember that. Two, two weeks later, it's a new wedding and we're both getting paid again. So why can't you just send me my money that I'm gonna be working that day? It just, it, just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. Regardless of what you have going on, you need to speak up, but you just think that you're gonna bully me or, and not physically, I know it sounds dramatic, but that's what it is. You think you're gonna bully me? You just think that you're gonna like pressure me into doing something without an explanation? No ma'am, that's not how that's gonna go. So, no. So, she responds, if it messes you up tomorrow, you should take clients tomorrow, no biggie. Let me spray my face before I put on this foundation. Let me, let me just tell you my response. <laughs> let me just tell you my response to that before I get upset. I said, easier said than done. I said, if you told me earlier in the week, then no biggie, not the day before, not cool, honestly. And I feel like you're being nonchalant about it because you know if it was you, you would be pissed. I'm not understanding why you wouldn't tell me you paid blank back if we agree to this otherwise together. See, I'm, I don't know where I got that from. I'm just delusional, clearly. <laughs> but see, that's why it's good to reflect on things and learn from things. And I'm glad I stood my ground because girl, F you, honestly. So she said, I'm not being nonchalant. I'm telling you that if you need that money, you should stay and work. Like you always say, people book last minute. You can make it. You coming with me, honestly, we wouldn't get back until 10 p.m. I'd rather you make it up than have an attitude, than come and have an attitude. But see, see, I wouldn't have an attitude if I came. Do you get what I'm saying? Like going, I don't even know where to start. Um, I just feel like she's saying that I should just take clients anyways. That's not an issue for me, okay? Let's, let's get it, let's get it straight. That's not an issue for me. But you're telling me the day before, that's just not realistic. I mean, I do get last minute clients and I do get walk-ins and, and you know, all that kind of stuff, but I could have had a whole day because I believe that was like, what is, is it the Memorial Day or Labor Day? It was one of those. Oops, sorry, my camera stopped recording. But um, yeah, it was like Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend. One of the, or like 4th of July, something like that. It was one of those weekends where I knew it was gonna be popping. I live in Atlanta, so you guys know, any day, any three day weekend or any weekend attached to a holiday, Atlanta gets it popping, okay? And that's my time to work. I don't even, I don't even participate in these these holiday activities because I'm working. So it's just kind of like, girl, that's rude as hell. Because you would be pissed if somebody told you that. Like, I'm just not understanding. I'm just, I'm literally not understanding. So yeah, that annoyed me and for her, and I just feel like she knew I was gonna say no or she was hoping that I was gonna just go along and say yes and it was just gonna be okay and blah 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 i put too much forehead too much forehead <laughs> too much foundation on my forehead but yeah or maybe she thought that i was just gonna do it and be okay with it and not say anything but no i was gonna speak up and i feel like it's nothing that we had to argue about we can talk about it like my thing is i'm not the kind of person that's gonna address the situation and attack you i'm gonna let you know how i feel but i feel like we are adults and there's no reason for us to be yelling and screaming and carrying on like animals like that's just not necessary i'm simply trying to have a conversation with you and you're basically 
being a bitch. You're shutting it down and I don't like that. So anyways, so her response to what I last said was, let me find it. Hold on, my mom's calling. Yes, mom? So her response to that was, it's not personal, sorry you feel that way. I said I'd be losing money, not you. Like I said, I'd rather you be here to make the money if you have a lot coming up that you have to do. Friends are not the situation, friends are not, it would have been the same situation. And you don't have to help me anymore with weddings. I don't want you to feel obligated or any funny business. Girl, that is funny business. Like it is, and the thing is like, she's, She's an interesting person, but I don't think that she was trying to be funny. I just think that she has so much pride that she couldn't just say what was up. Do you see what I'm saying? Versus just trying to shut me down and thinking that I'm gonna just take what she hands me. Like, oh, come do this wedding and not get paid. Yeah, I just think that's what that was. So that was just, that was just a weird situation. So my response to that, and this was the last time that we spoke, by the way, was like, I don't feel like there's any funny business. I just feel, I'm just not feeling this situation because there was no communication. And I do feel obligated, but not in a bad way because I'm, because if I say I'm going to help, I'm going to help. Cause again, that, that was, uh, cause again, that was information that you didn't share with me and it still affects me as well. I've appreciated you looking out for me and always including me in weddings. So that was our last time um, talking. She did read the text message. She never responded and we ain't talked since then. Um, at the time, <laughs> sorry Ju, <laughs> to put you out there, but at the time me and Ju were not talking. <laughs> we were taking a little sabbatical. Sab is that how you say it? Sabbatical? Sab sab you we was taking a break, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we hadn't talked that weekend that me and her fell out. It was just a weekend. It wasn't anything crazy. So, um, so I had eventually told him what happened and he was like, wow, she unfollowed me. And I was like, uh, okay. Like, mind you, he had nothing to do. You know, like normally Drew be like, he be stirring the pot with situations, but he honestly knew nothing about this situation. So... She had unfollowed him, so I was like, so that definitely means that she unfollowed me, and she did, so I just unfollowed her back, and I was like, I guess it is what it is. I, I never was being nasty towards her. I never cussed her out, although I guess you guys could, I'm, I'm sure you guys will agree that I should have, and I'm a very understanding person, and as much as people like to, to say things about me, I always put myself in people's shoes in a situation. No matter how bad I am, I try to look at both sides of the story. No matter how bad I may have cussed you out before or whatever the situation is, I always, always, always look at both sides. And now that I'm older, it's like before I even open my mouth, I really think about it. Like, do I even want to give this any of my time? Do I even want to give this person energy? So. I just feel like she is a terrible communicator and child, may God be with her, okay? So yeah, we haven't talked since then, but about a year later or a few months later, I don't really remember, she did follow me again on Instagram and I followed her back because honestly, I thought she was going to apologize to me, but she still has not apologized. So <laughs> whatever, at this point, I don't, my, my face looks good. Y'all, this camera? <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, she um hasn't apologized. I don't really care at this point. I'm really over it. But basically, I just want to like tell that story because, you know, I know there's people who who probably work with people. I'm going to be using my concealer again because you guys know I love concealer. But yeah, I just want to tell that story because I know there's probably somebody who's in an awkward situation. And my advice to you is to honestly just stand your ground and speak up. It can go one of two ways. The person's gonna understand where you're coming from or the person, like my story, is gonna completely shut down, shut you out and act like it never happened, you know? So I say do whatever works for you, do whatever makes you comfortable, do not do anything that will make you uncomfortable because honestly, that situation just was not sitting right with me. It would not have sat right with me if I went through with that. Like, who? And I'm not no beginning makeup artist. We are literally, we literally started makeup 
at about the same time. We have the same volume of clients. We have the same everything. So you weren't doing anything for me. I was helping you and I, and I hate to sound like that. Like I said, I appreciated her always helping me, but I was constantly turning away weddings because I would already have her on my schedule, on my calendar. And I'm not gonna be like, oh no, I can't do your wedding because somebody booked me. If somebody, if somebody reaches out to me and I already have it on my calendar, I just am not available. That's just how I, that's just how I operate. So I know in her head, she probably thinks like, oh, you wasn't getting booked, no way, blah, 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 I was helping you. Girl, I'm a woman of my word, so I'm gonna keep my word. That's how I work, that's how I roll. So yeah, but you know, even at that time, like it was just annoying too. Like, do you ever feel like things happen at the worst time, but also everything happens for a reason as well? Because literally, like I said, like I told her and I'm telling you guys, it was just a bad time. Like, I just felt like I had just got my suite. I was like getting in the groove of like, um, paying this $2.55 a week, y'all, which I still pay, <laughs> okay? And it was just like, I just wasn't, I was just, I wasn't moving right. I was moving harder and not smarter. So at the time, your girl was, the funds was looking a little <laughs> funny, okay? And I had a hella stuff going on. Like, it was like always something. Like, I feel like every week something was happening. It was just like a lot. Like, I was just like, the devil is working, honey. So that's just me being transparent. Like, I've never tried to like flex or act like, you know, everything's just okay because we're human. People like to always showboat and act like, you know, everything's okay and and things are great. No, when you, when you are an entrepreneur or even in, in a regular working world, you're gonna have ups and you're gonna have downs. It just is what it is. I'm glad now though that I've grown as a businesswoman and as a person as well. So like now even me, with me not working, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I am A-OK, -okay, okay? I'm not stretching, stretch, stretching. I'm not stressing, I just move a lot differently. I just feel like things happen to you for a reason for you to realize like, okay, I need to get my together. So ever since then, honestly, I've been good. I still have my suite, I'm still getting booked. I have been doing more weddings. Um, by myself at that, or if I need somebody, I will ask. But yeah, she, you, you never stopped my bag, sweetie. Like that just goes to show what kind of person you are. Cause I feel like if my friend slash business friend, whatever, you know, told me something like that, I wouldn't just be like, you'll be okay. It is what it is. Like what kind of shit is that? I just feel like when you, People like to say like it's business and I am like that. I do have to separate business and friends a lot of times, but I just feel like um, a part of running a good business is being a good person as well. So if you don't have any kind of empathy or you're a people person, you're not gonna, you're not gonna gain from that at all. You're, you're not, because even, look at this. So I had, around the same time, the same exact time, I told you guys, I was going through a lot of stuff, especially financially. I have a, I had another bride that had booked. Her wedding also got canceled. This was my personal wedding. I was gonna go out the country. It was gonna be my first destination wedding. Yeah, I was so excited, I was so excited. But the wedding got canceled, and she had already paid me and she asked for her deposit back and I I had to be like, no, did I wanna say no? No, but that was a decision that I had to make at the time because I'm like, well, deposits are technically non-refundable, but me being me, I'd be like, here you go, you can have it back. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just explained to her like, you know, now is just not the best time. <laughs> so I did offer her like, a, um like a makeup one-on-one -on -one and and like a free service and to this day i hope she's watching she is like my favorite client you guys like literally my favorite client like i love her to death we literally talk i talk to her more than i do my regular like a lot of my clients like she always texts me and like we be talking about wigs we be talking about how how we're doing just updating each other like we've had one-on-ones multiple times like Sometimes I don't even charge her because I just feel like I felt so bad about not being able to give her her money back 
but like at the time it just was not feasible like it just was not you guys it just was not <laughs> but i knew from a business perspective i had to make it up some kind of way because i don't like to scam people or jip people and i could have easily gave her her money back and moved on and and honestly i don't think our client um client makeup artist relationship would be where it is now because like literally whenever i do her makeup we catch up on live i tell her stuff that i don't even tell some of my friends i'm sure she tells me stuff like it's just like sometimes you just have like this like you click with people so basically what i'm saying is you should always be a people person regardless of your business people are always gonna love you and respect you a lot more one if you're just more upfront and two if you're just more understanding like if she had gone about this situation differently instead of just saying like oh you can you can get your um clients back or it's gonna be a waste of money for me and blah 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 it's just it's just an approach of things i don't i can't even think of words right now but her approach was just terrible my face looks so good you always look so good and i'm glad you guys are seeing my face how it really looks versus like the camera distorting it and like making it too bright or too like we're here now we're friends <laughs> we are friends guys <laughs> let me know what you guys think about this situation not that it matters anymore but you know chime in below i'm using coconutty by the way um, chime below, let me know what you think. Was she wrong? Was I wrong? Who was wrong? Like, I honestly feel like because you was petty <laughs> and decided to unfollow and didn't respond to my text, you were in the wrong. And I was right <laughs> at this point. I'm not even that childish and I'm not that person. But I just feel like when you can't communicate, you're, you're automatically in the wrong. What reason do you have not to communicate? Especially when somebody is not attacking you. I've told you guys about two other stories about how like hair companies have tried to scam me, brides have tried to scam me. I'm such a nice person. I don't understand, especially when it comes to my business. I know like this is like becoming my brand too and a part of me, but this is more me. And like, I feel like right now we're friends, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like me at work and my business, I'm so nice and people get away with so much like it's freaking crazy i'm gonna use a little bit of coco naughty because i want to be like extra like sun kiss today but like even people have like who follow me for a long time or book with me and never met me they'll literally be like wow you are so nice and they'll be like taken aback and i'm like what is that supposed to mean they're like, no, like, you're really nice. Like, I know my post may come off aggressive or I may look like this kind of girl. I just think people, you know, of course, have this idea of what kind of person they think you are. And then when when they meet you, it's completely different. So I'm telling you, you can literally ask anybody who's ever booked with me how nice I am, how accommodating I am, anybody I've worked with. I try my best to make them feel comfortable. I'm just rambling at this point because the story is done and I'm still doing makeup. But I just feel like word of mouth is very big and people's experience with you is going to stick with them for a long time. So if you had a bad, I, I know, I know makeup artists who are so nice and so professional and they've had a bad day and they've serviced somebody and they came to me and be like, I went to so-and-so and they were just, they, I just didn't like their energy. I'm like, what? They're so nice. They're like, mm -mm, I'm never going back. So it's like, even on my worst days, and that's why, you know, in future videos, when I talk to you guys about my makeup artist side more, it's like, it's draining doing makeup. Like, even days when I don't feel like um, doing makeup or talking to people, I have to be so nice. And it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. I'm going to be using... This spice cinnamon. I think I just want to use a matte one today. Mm. That's a whole nother story for another day. But point is always be nice, always be kind to people that you work with, people that you're servicing, and also to clients and customers. Be nice to the people that are servicing you because when y'all be rude, it makes our job very hard. Very hard.
And y'all, I'm about to highlight a little bit today, okay? I'm gonna be using my Artist Couture Sugar Daddy. I used to love this stuff. And I'm just gonna use whatever is in the top, as you can see. Like, literally, just a little bit, because this highlight is like, blinding. Blinding. I think my front is a little too well. <laughs> I can always tell when I start doing my makeup. I'm like, hmm. I tell you guys, I used to be a highlight whore, and I, I don't highlight anymore. So it's like, even now when I do my clients, they're like, Tasha, where's the, where's the highlight? I'd be like, I already added some. They're like, <laughs> like Tasha Moore, <laughs> what's happening to you? I'm like, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna use my Morphe setting spray. So what do I need to do next to my face? I need to do, I'm gonna do my lashes. I just, I just feel like this is a staple. If you don't have a kinky straight wig in your collection, you need one. Yeah, these are the high maintenance lashes and um, so what I'm gonna be using is in the style high maintenance as well. I love these lashes so much. I feel like, these lashes are low key, looking bigger than they normally do. But we're gonna keep them because I'm not getting up again, so <laughs> it just is what it is. So I'm gonna use my KKW lip liner in the shade Nude 2.5. It's like close to my skin tone, but like a hair darker, like slightly darker. I'm gonna use my KKW Nude 3. I've been liking this um, lip combo because it's not like, you guys know I normally heavily line my lip, but this one is like a really soft, subtle nude. So I've been liking that a lot. Like besides the lashes, this is low key giving me like bridal vibes, you know? And then I'm gonna use, it's sheer, or no, this is beige. Okay, beige by um, B. Taylor Beauty. And why is there a piece of hair on my I like this look. What do you guys think? Like, if it was more blended and not so, like, in the eye area, which this is what I want on my eye, but if it was more, like, soft, this would definitely be bridal. Bridal vibes. I can't wait to do weddings again. <laughs> I need to see what I'm going to do with this hair. I'm not wearing this headband. Not that I'm going anywhere, <laughs> but I just wanted it to be out of my face. Even though the headband was kind of cute, huh? But, uh, I tell you guys, this hair holds a curl. Like, get you some kinky straight, okay? Don't argue with me. Don't ask. Get you some kinky straight. So yeah, guys, this pretty much completes my look. I'm surprised that I finished my makeup that quick while I was talking. Because normally, ciao. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the story time. Comment your thoughts below. I want to know what you guys think about this situation. And yeah, let me know if you guys want some more story times. I'll try to think of some. A lot are personal. Like, I probably won't get too personal on here because, like, some things just need to be kept in the vault. You know what I'm saying? But if you like my story times, let me know and I will do some more. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!